guys welcome back to downtown rams as always i'm your host alexis craft join here with my co-host jake allen bogan and we are continuing with our 2022 nfl draft prospect interviews and joining us on the show today we have isaiah graham mobley linebacker from boston college how are you doing isaiah i'm great guys thanks for having me absolutely we're excited to talk with you man yeah well, i'm excited to answer your question that you have <laughs> Yeah, well, we're going to start it off at the very beginning. We kind of want to hear a little bit about how you got into the game of football. Yeah, I mean, started young. Um, I kind of have a pretty rich history in football in terms of my family. Um, Godfathers all played football um, at Villanova. And then my my dad went to Cookstown and played with John Mobley, who actually went along to play at the, the Denver Broncos. So we got, got some NFL history within the family. Um, started young, started with flag football, and then uh, kind of got into it. I always grew up uh, watching college football. You know, Penn State, uh, being from Pennsylvania, um, they were they were huge growing up, uh, so they were always fun to watch. Um, and then uh, got into tackle football around like sixth grade or so, and then realized I was like, wow, this is fun. You know, this is for me. Um, and then it kind of just went off from there. And now going off from there, I want to ask you, um, sounds like you watched a lot of football and without naming a family member who was in the NFL, uh, who would you say was your favorite NFL player growing up? It definitely had to be Reggie Bush. Uh, when I like watching Penn State, uh, there was a lot of Penn State USC games uh, oh, yeah. going on, plus like the Rose Bowl and whatnot. Um, so I would, I would, you know, inadvertently be watching Penn State. And then I was like, well, who's number five? And then I kind of just fell in love with him and watching it ever since. And then I got the NCAA 06 and just used him whenever I possibly could, whoever I was playing against. Um, so, it, you know, he was awesome to watch. He I'm was definitely an electrifying player. He's a popular yeah. answer. It's not the first time someone said that on the show. And it definitely won't be the last time. Uh, Reggie right. Bush, USC days, definitely very iconic. Uh, but when it came time for you to play in college, you ended up at Boston College. What was it about uh, Boston that made you want to go there? Yeah, well, so I actually started at Temple um, for my first five years and just transferred to BC this past year in 2021. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Um, so, B I mean, BC was a great place to transfer to. Um, they had all the right, you know, they said all the right things. They they were on the right path in terms of, um, you know, winning to, or, you know, uh, competing to win an ACC championship. Um, and, you know, we had all the right guys to do it. Um, so I was really excited about that. I mean, and Coach Halfley, um, it was his first season in 2020. Uh, so, you know, coming into COVID, that was really difficult for them. And they still figure out a way to win. Um, and I liked their culture. I liked what they were saying. And I liked all the coaches that he built around him. Um, so they, they said all the right things and ended up being a really good place to be. Now you mentioned Temple. Um, that was when that um, I might be dating a little bit here, but was that when uh, Rule was there? Like yeah, the I was there for beginning? Rules. Okay, Rules right. last year. Yeah, all right. I was there yeah. for Rules last year. Yeah, because I remember we we interviewed. Oh, I forget who we interviewed. Derek. He's from my area because he went to Albany Academy. I live in upstate New York, and okay. he he followed Rule to Baylor, and I can't remember his name. Uh, um, Derek Thomas. Yes, Derek Thomas. Yeah. There we go. The corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's yeah, he's a he's a New York guy. Yeah, yeah. So I thought I thought that was cool because you said Temple, and you know, obviously, I'm a big fan of Rule. Uh, so it, it's cool that you were there. Um, for yeah, he's his a last guy. Year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I just wanted to ask you. Um, obviously, you know, that caught my attention, so I want to follow up on that. But um, I want to ask you as far as you know pitching, because even though you were at Temple for a while you know, you finished with Boston college. So if, 
if anyone say I'm a student athlete and I'm considering going to Boston college, uh, how would you, you know, kind of seal the deal and, and sell me on Boston college as the place I should go to play, you know, college football. Yeah. I mean, in terms of the environment, first and foremost, it's like, I mean, it, it might be one of the safest places I've ever been to in terms of like convincing your parents to let you go off to somewhere, especially if you're like from, you know, the West Coast or Midwest, like if you're like, yeah, I want to go up to Boston. It's like you're probably in the safest environment, <laughs> you know, <laughs> potentially ever. Um, but it was really nice. It's like a, diff- a, a change from Philadelphia, you know, being in North Philly is definitely like, you know, a little now, a little noisy, a little hectic. Um, so going up to Boston is super quiet, you know, get to go to sleep and not have to hear sirens and cars going by. Um, so, um, you know, the environment's great. Um, the people all around are super welcoming, really nice. Uh, you just, just got to get used to the Boston accent a little bit. It's a little different. Um, <laughs> Um, but you know, in terms of the, you know, the sports, um, they have the stadiums right on campus, like your locker rooms right outside the stadium. Um, the culture there is, is wonderful. The equipment staff is wonderful. The training staff is great. Everyone is, uh, like I said, super welcoming. Um, and then, you know, you get to play in the ACC against the best competition in the country. Um, and then, you know, everybody wants to get a shot at playing clubs. And so it's also, you get that every year. Um, I mean, Boston is a great time. Yeah. Well, that kind of leads into my next question. Cause I was going to say that you've played against a lot of really talented players, uh, during your time at, at Boston. So I was going to ask you, is there anyone that stands out to you as being the toughest guy that you had to go against? I probably have to say, uh, Cunningham from Louisville, the quarterback very dynamic. He's kind of like uh, Lamar Jackson's little brother. He kind of, he kind of like <laughs> models his game after him. Um, and he was this, he's all over the field. You know, they kind of, they don't run a triple option, but they have the option too. Um, and so you have to, you know, keep someone on the quarterback at all times, which is sometimes you just don't have the numbers to do so, um, yeah. depending on the scheme or the play that you're running. So, you know, he, he changes the game for their, for their entire team. Yeah. And I mean, you also had to deal with like guys like Tutu Atwell, who, you know, we know pretty well. Um, So, I mean, I hear you. Plus, I can't imagine just, you know, putting, you know, myself in your shoes, just, you know, defending the triple option. eh? It seems like unbelievably complicated and just it it just it feels like it, you know, it takes a toll on any defense. And then obviously that's why so many colleges run it, uh, you know, at that level. Um, but do you have a favorite game uh, from college? Like anything that stands out to you? Like, okay, that was definitely my favorite game I played in. It, it had to be Missouri. It just like had the, you know, all of the components of being like an instant classic. Um, you know, you have the ACC versus SEC. So, you know, SEC thinks they're top tier as well, you know, always. <laughs> um, and then, you know, their fans traveled really well. So right outside of our locker room is like normally where all of our fans lined up when we walk into the stadium. And it was, we walk out and it was flooded full of Missouri fans. And they're all just chanting SEC outside of our locker room. So it was like, My you God. have the you have the, the animosity coming out of the locker room. And then, you know, the game was going back and forth the entire time. Um, the game was tied up like 7-7 in the, the, almost the entire first quarter. And then, um, you know, we get 14, 14, and then we go up and then they come back and then uh, we make some plays to stop them on the goal line. I almost got kicked out of the game for targeting. So it was like a, a ton of things that were going on. And then, um, which wasn't a targeting, by the way. But No, I know. Well, you, you didn't have to tell me that. I figured. Yeah. <laughs> no um, way. And I then, mean, yeah, that's a whole other thing. We won't get and into then that. them <laughs> driving down the field to, to, for their kicker, kick a 62 yard to tie the game up for it to go in overtime and then Brandon Sebastian intercepting the game and then I've never been part of uh, a field rush a court rush like that was insane like <laughs> everybody was just rushing the field I immediately ran to my family everybody jumped down it was awesome took pictures on the field and everything was dope that's crazy it definitely sounds like you said an instant classic so something you'll remember forever which is awesome right. uh but you know Looking at your position of linebacker, what would you say is the most important trait for a linebacker to have? I guess I would say like constant communication. Um, you know, 
maybe not at the outside linebacker position, but definitely as the mic. Um, and I know that in the NFL, the mic is usually the one that has uh, the the speaker in their helmet to get the plays from the defensive coordinator. So, um, you know, once you get the play for them, it's kind of on you to really uh, relay it to everyone else um, and make sure everyone is in the correct position to defend the offense. Um, so definitely being a constant communicator is definitely super important. If you're, if you're quiet, you know, no one's going to, one, no one's going to respect you. No one's going to follow you as a leader. And then three, uh, your, I mean, your defense isn't going to be able to work efficiently. No, I absolutely agree with you. And I guess going back to the, the targeting, because I have just a, I can't stand that. Uh, it must feel good knowing, you know, the NFL, they don't, they don't put such a premium on that in the NFL. I mean, yeah. I just, I hate the idea and I'll, I'll ask you a question that's different from this, but I just had to throw it out there. Cause I just hate the idea. Like you, the student athlete, like, you know, you're not getting paid. I mean, now the FD NIL, but like, you're not getting mm-hmm. paid like millions of dollars. So like, you know, for you, it's like, you're trying to, to work your way up and you know, you're in a, I mean, we've seen it before, you know, big time bowl games, yeah. uh, you know, it's semifinals uh, to go to the, the championship and, you know, you, you get kicked out of the game for targeting and it's like, you're done. Like, you know, I mean, it's such right. a fast game and you're a linebacker. So, you know, I mean, it's hard to stop on a dime. You know, if a guy's putting himself in harm's way, I mean, you know, that's mm-hmm. why the whole, the, the fake slide by, uh, you know, Kenny Pickett that went crazy. I yeah. mean, that's why people got so pissed about that because it's like, well, mm-hmm. all right, well, that's a whole new dynamic that just opened up if they allow that. Right. So, yeah, pretty pretty unfortunate, but it does get better in the NFL. So I'm happy for you there. But uh, with that yeah. being said, talking about the top traits of the linebackers, what would you say Isaiah is your biggest strength as a linebacker? I see my biggest strength definitely is just like running from sideline to sideline. Um, I'm also a constant communicator. I'm very loud on the field, <laughs> um, so I, I like to make sure that everyone's in their position, um, especially. You know, you you wanna you wanna make a play. So in a way, as a linebacker, you're kind of you're in the middle of everything. So you kind of are making sure, you know, if you if you're a big play guy, you kind of make sure that everyone is in their correct position. So they kind of squeeze everything back into you. Because if you keep everything in front of you, then you know the football game becomes very easy. Um so I definitely think that um, just my speed and then also my versatility and ability to adapt um, to, you know, different game like situations, you know, we make um, in-game adjustments to, you know, if they're running different plays or, the, you know, they have different adjustments to what we initially thought. Uh, so just being adaptive and then as, as the communicator, as the mic linebacker, you know, once you change something, you have to remember it throughout the course of the game. Uh, so, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's important. For sure. And, you know, as the draft is approaching, is there anything that you're looking to improve on? Yeah. Um, when it comes to me playing fast, I do tend to get a little over aggressive. <laughs> um, so I do uh, run past in your hips sometimes um, in terms of uh, tackling and whatnot. So that's just something, you know, comes with practice. Um, definitely something that can easily be changed and something that um, will be fixed. Now I did get a chance to, you know, see you, um, you ran a four, four, six, two at the combine. Um, what was that Mm -hmm. combine experience like? And, and what did you, you know, what were your overall takeaways from it? Yeah. Um, it's definitely a super unique experience. Um, there's what I got there Wednesday finished on Saturday. So everything leading up to it is kind of just like evaluations. Um, you know, I mean, they're putting, thousands of dollars, millions of dollars into you. So yeah. they want to make sure that your body is capable of sustaining the years that they want you to, to play. Um, so, you know, you'd have a ton of medical evaluations, you know, psychological evaluations, just uh, making sure that they understand you as a player and you kind of, you, you get it, but you know, it gets a little tedious at the time, but um, the environment was incredible. Um, my, my trainers were originally from Indianapolis. So they kind of knew the area and you like, really good food places to order from. So it was a really good experience from, from that point of view as well. Um, That's the most important like part. A, <laughs> very, you, know, you got to have the good food. Um, and then uh, it was funny because like, you know, like all the bigger name guys were there as well from like Georgia and they're all, you know, just won the national championship. 
Um, so you have like all of the, the super fans there. Um, and, you know, they're, you know, obviously know them, but I'm a smaller name guy. So like, I wasn't expecting people to be there with like my pictures. And there actually was a couple of guys there and I was like, whoa, you know who I am. <laughs> um, so that was a really uh, cool experience. Um, some kids like ran me down. I was like, oh my gosh, you know who I am. <laughs> um, so that was kind of dope. Um, and then, you know, once you, once you're done that, it's, you kind of, you get, you finally get your sleep in um, on that Friday night. And then, you know, you kind of just wait around all day Saturday, but um, then you get into, you get into what you, you came there to do. And then you, you know, you perform because this is what you've been doing for the past three months. Um, you just take it and put it all together and, you know, hopefully it works out in your favor. Well, yeah, it definitely sounds like another unforgettable experience, uh, very hectic, but very uh, fulfilling um, and exciting, yeah. you know, as you mentioned, but uh, you know, looking at the NFL, this is just kind of a fun question. Is there one player, if you had to choose one player to match up against in the NFL, who would it be? I feel like everybody says Tom Brady, so I'm going to try to find someone else. <laughs> um, everyone does say Tom Brady. Yeah, I'm glad he came back, though. <laughs> when he, do, yeah, he, when he took that like month hiatus, though, when we were doing yeah. interviews, people were like, I would say Tom Brady, but he just retired. But I think he's going to come back, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. I'm happy. I'm happy he's back. Um, hmm. I'm going to say... I'm going to say Matt Ryan because of the the BC tradition that he has. Um, and then, you know, he's not in Atlanta anymore. Um, and then he's on a new team. So it kind of like, you know, he's learning a new system on yeah. a new coaching staff. Um, so it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be cool to see him in, in a blue and white uniform. Um, and then, you know, he has a rich history with, with BC. So that, that's, that'd be pretty unique. Yeah. I mean, you guys have, a ton of guys that come from BC um, ones that just come right off the top of my head, obviously John Johnson, uh, you know, you have Simmons, you have uh, Will Harris. I actually talked to at the senior bowl a few years ago. And uh, the one I'm totally forgetting, I think that's on the Packers, the linebacker. I forget. I uh, his name is, Yes. I was a big fan of his coming yeah. out. So, so yeah, you've had plenty of guys and obviously Matt Ryan is like, he's the face of the Falcons franchise, whether people want to admit it or mm-hmm. not. I mean, he just, he is so uh, kind of crazy to see him leave that team. We'll see what he does with the Colts. But, you know, talking in terms of the NFL and different teams, uh, we do cover the Rams during uh, the regular season. We are a Rams podcast, Downtown Rams. Um, so I got to ask you, have you spoken with the Los Angeles Rams in any capacity? Um, a little bit here and there. There wasn't anything formal, but, you know, the buzz is there. Buzz is there. I like it. I like it. <laughs> and Halfway's halfway is a pretty pretty good friend, you know, on, with the staff. Okay. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Well, we like to hear that because we'd love for you to end up on the Rams, but we will be fans of you no matter where you go. Uh, just hopefully it is uh, on the Los Angeles Rams. But uh, <laughs> just to, to close us out here in your own words, who is Isaiah Graham Mobley as a person and who is he as a player? Yeah. That's a unique question. People don't ask that a lot. Um, as a person, uh, very outgoing and adventurous. Um, also, you know, loving and kind. And then uh, I, I love photography and videography. So, you know, you know, maybe LA would be the, the, the right place to go. Um, but then on the field, completely different person in terms of personality and um, I'm very monotoned outside of the field. So on the, on the field, I'm a little louder, like to scream a lot. I tend to lose my voice after games. Um, I do, I do like being aggressive and, and making big plays and hitting hard. So, you know, the aggressiveness is there. You see the emotion on the field. Um, if you watch any of the tape. Um, so it's kind of like, a lot of people will say like Clark Kent and Superman in, time, in terms. Sometimes I've heard that a couple of times. Um, you know, you put on the glasses, go to the go to the newsroom, go to the global. 
definitely a chill guy. But then when it comes when it comes time to action and, and you know defending your your name on your back, you now you got something to fight for. I love that. That is uh, <clears throat> that's a great answer, and uh, I can tell like you're very down to earth. But then when you get on the uh, the field, then you're you're John, man. But you're also playing. You know, you're yeah. you're laying the wood, so to speak, as as they call it. Um, one mm-hmm. final question for you, kind of you know outside the box a little bit. I'm going to ask you. Uh, it's a three parter here. I'm going to ask you to recommend me and Alexis, so Alexis and I, uh, a TV show, mm-hmm. an album, and for Alexis because she's obsessed with snacks. She would prefer that you recommend her a snack. Please. Okay. Hmm. What have I been watching recently? It's so funny because, like, when you you have you know exactly what you've been watching, you know exactly what you listen to, but then when you get put on the spot, you, you forget everything. Um, I'm here. For um, that. I totally get it. In terms of an album. So, so we did, we did take, um, uh, like a lot of medical exams during the NFL, um, process. So like my go-to was listening to Lauren Hill <laughs> cause she was like calming me down a lot. So mm-hmm. I'm going to recommend the score by the Fugees cause it is fire and you should okay. listen to it. And it's like super common. Um, but also like super vibey if you like, um, like Bob Marley, Jamaican type vibes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. Um, yeah, and but it's like it's like a it's sort of like a mixtape kind of if you will. So it's like it's it the vibe changes throughout the entire thing, but it's awesome. Um, a show that I have been watching. It can be an um, old show too. Just really anything. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Euphoria is kind of been. <laughs> that's funny. What, what? Yeah, Euphoria's been. I was gonna say Euphoria is popular. It is, like it right is very popular. Um, if you want, if you want to go back and watch something, <laughs> which is, I, I used to watch Smallville when I was a kid. Oh my god! It's like it's a, it's another Superman movie. It's another Superman show. It's actually that might be a little classy too. Smallville's pretty good. I've, I've tried. Heard great uh, things. I've tried. It feels so dated now. <laughs> it's so outdated. It's like the first thing that's coming to mind. Sorry. No, you're fine. Um, so I would take it you would take and, DC over Marvel, right? I was big DC uh, growing up, which was which is hilarious. I love the Justice League, um, Young Justice, like when I was growing up, and then Batman Beyond is like mm. one of my favorite shows growing up. Um, and then a snack. There's these like, um, I think they're made by Chex Mix actually, but it's like um cookies and cream covered just the checks just like the checks piece yeah it's it's but called they're like mud buddies it, is that what you're talking uh, about mud buddies oh my gosh they're incredible okay they're so good they are good i've they're had so those good. they're kind of like i don't know um when i was a kid we used to call it puppy chow i don't know if it's I've the never same heard thing, of that but that was like maybe that's the midwest <laughs> thing but like when people mm. would like make it they call it puppy chow. I figured that's They're not wrong. the real name, but um, yes, it is very good. Okay. So we got our three recommendations, all good recommendations, and I can vouch for the snack because I have had it. And it's then we got to hit him with ours too. We got to, we got to recommend stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is, this yeah. is give a penny, take a penny, not just take a penny and run away. <laughs> okay. Let me, like you go, you go first. See, all right. on the spot is hard. It is hard. <laughs> I'm just going to pull up. I mean, my, my only issue is I've been watching so much. Like I, I'm watching Gotham. So you're, you know, DC fan. Love the Gotham right. show. Um, I will recommend Barry on HBO because it's unlike anything oh, I've, I've seen ever it. seen. Oh, you have? I've okay. It. It, it's yes. phenomenal. Yes. It's season awesome. three is coming out next month and I cannot wait. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so since you've already seen Barry, I'll recommend Bel Air. Uh, one of the prospects that we interviewed was telling me to watch Bel Air. And it's mm-hmm. like this modern day, you know, reimagined version. If it was just a drama of the Fresh mm. Prince, and it's so good, dude. Like it's it's really good. Like I I was blown away. It's on Peacock. I recommend it. Okay. Um, album. I'm more into like rock and metal. I don't know if you're into rock at all. I like all genres. All right. 
So check out Horizons by Starset. That is my that's my favorite band. And it's their, their album. It it's their album that just came out. I want to say, geez, when did that come out? It was last year, I know, but I don't remember the exact time. Recommend but... him. Wait, which one did you recommend him? I recommended him Horizons by Starset. Okay. <clears throat> I would have I would have done um Ice Nine Kills. <laughs> no, no, no. If for, if I was doing Star Set, I just would have gone Vessels. Well, I mean, out. you just listen to anything Star Set. I mean, it's it's I mean, unlike yeah. anything you've ever. So I'm a big fan of like unlike anything you've ever seen before, and mm-hmm. uh, it is basically it's called cinematic rock is the genre. So it sounds mm-hmm. a little bit like Breaking Benjamin, Lincoln Park mixed with like David Bowie and EDM. Oh wow. <laughs> I told you it's um, <laughs> so I'll I was try trying to I was trying to find something kind of similar to what you were saying, like kind of like a chill vibe. Uh do mm-hmm. you like R and B? Yeah. So there's two albums, and I don't know how to pronounce her name. I think it's pronounced Nija. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of her. It's N I J A. And she is okay. kind of like, I don't know that she's new, but this last album, Don't Say I Didn't Warn You, is so good. And I hadn't heard of her until this album, but I was just okay. scrolling through new R&B releases and I found this album and I love it a lot. Um, so, yeah, it's like honestly one of probably one of my favorite R&B albums after um, her, her album last year. Uh, yeah. Was uh, Back in My Mind. Out. Yeah. Yeah, I might have pronounced her name wrong. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. I need to look into her more, but I found that album and I really, really liked it. Um, awesome. And then as far as TV shows go, um, I'm going to say the last thing that I binged watched was Good Girls on Netflix. That's really good, too. Yeah, have you seen it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is good. You've it seen everything. Good. <laughs> i'm like i'm a media major so, so I, I like to okay. watch a lot of stuff uh, yeah um yeah then there's probably nothing that i i mean how to get away with murder is old very good that was that was one of my favorite shows <laughs> yeah all right i see i watched i recently watched um the flight attendant on um oh yeah oh how is that it's, on. it's pretty good like, okay I, like i remember i remember my mom was like it's not gonna be good and then it was actually pretty really good and then, and then she started watching with us. She's like, oh my God, it's really good. <laughs> oh my God. It's the title, man. You know, like there's a, yeah. what's the one Alexis that they keep showing the, the trailer for? Um, like every commercial had it, the cleaning lady. <laughs> like oh. it's, it's just the title that throws you off. I'm sure it's a great show, but it's like, right. I'm sorry. I'm not like, oh yeah, I want to watch the cleaning lady. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Also uh, winning that. time. Winning Time is awesome. It's about the Showtime Lakers. That's blown me away. Mm. Three episodes in on HBO because it took the place of okay. Euphoria. So it comes out every Sunday now. So gotcha. good. I'll try it out. But well, yeah. we let we left you with some recommendations. You gave us some recommendations. Uh, we appreciate it. I'll have to let you know. You'll have to let me know if you listen to that album. Um, it's pretty good. Yeah, for sure. But thank you so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Please stay healthy uh, as the draft approaches. And again, we will be following along with your career and we will definitely be in touch. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. It was a, it was a great interview. <laughs> Very good <laughs> questions. Thank you. Well, we appreciate yeah. you. We appreciate you taking the time. We're fans of you. Um, obviously had a great time and, uh, yeah, like Alexis said, we'll be rooting for you. Love to see you, you know, wearing the horns, that the helmet over there. But if you're not, we'll be uh, we'll be cheering for you. And you know, I know you had some injuries, and you know, we're just hoping you stay healthy, and you get a chance to to do your thing because you got a lot of talent. No doubt, appreciate you. Absolutely, man. You take care. You as well. 